Hi everyone, welcome to Lola's Frugal Life. This is episode number 58. Today we're going to be talking about decluttering your things. So please stick around for a few quick words from our sponsor and we'll get right into today's episode. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about tips for decluttering. So I think everybody can kind of use decluttering, whether you have a lot of stuff to declutter or you just have a little bit of stuff to declutter. Um, I mean, just over the course of living, you wind up with extra stuff than you need. I mean, you get gifts, you buy things in a store that you didn't necessarily need, and things just kind of accumulate in your home. So um, decluttering is not organizing, so that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about actually getting rid of stuff that you no longer need. So organizing is more like finding a home for where things go, but decluttering is actually getting rid of things. That That's how I look at it anyway. They're kind of talked about kind of together as if they're one, and they definitely go together, but I feel like the decluttering part is more the getting rid of the stuff that you don't need, like decluttering, getting rid of that stuff you don't need, getting rid of the clutter, and then organizing is putting away the things that you do want to keep and you want to have a home for those. So we're going to be focusing on the getting rid of the stuff that you don't need. So, I mean, even if you feel like you don't have that much stuff, everyone can benefit from decluttering, usually. I mean, I doubt that there's that many people um, out there whose home has only absolutely necessary things in it and there's nothing in it that they don't use anymore or is just taking up space. So, I mean, the more, the more you can declutter and the less things you have in your home that you're not using, that's less things to clean and less things to put away and keep organized. So it's a benefit no matter what. If you can get rid of some things that you're not using anymore, it's definitely going to definitely going to be helpful to you in your um, home maintenance and keeping your home nice and clean and organized. So when you're thinking about decluttering, you know, depending on how much you have to do. Um, you might feel like this is a giant project. Like just, you know, you might have a big home that has like so many different places to go. You might have a small home that just has things kind of stuck in various places because there's not enough room for the things that you have. Um, It can just kind of feel like an overwhelming project if it's something that you're trying, gonna try and think you're gonna tackle all at once if you have a lot to do. And that can definitely stop you from wanting to get started. You know, it's it's hard to want to start a project that feels so huge and overwhelming and you just know you're not going to have the time to do it. So, you know, this is a good time to mention one of my favorite sayings, which is progress over perfection. No matter what you get done, you've made a difference and it's better than it was before. So it's, it's always better to do something than to do nothing. So don't try and um, think of this as I'm going to declutter my entire home I'm going to take a vacation, I'm going to take a week off of work, and I'm going to just declutter for the whole week. Like, you do not, you can do that if that's something you want to do. If it's a manageable project and you want to take off the time and just do it all in one shot, that's totally fine. But if the thought of doing it is stopping you from doing it because it feels like an overwhelming project, try not to approach it as a giant project. Just do little bits at a time. If you can commit to doing just 15 minutes a week, you'll be making continuous progress and there's nothing wrong with that. You can, your, your two choices is do it all at once, which is probably not gonna happen, or don't do it at all because you know it's such an overwhelming project to do it once, or do 15 minutes a week. In a month, you'll have done an hour on that project. If you don't do it at all, you've done nothing. So it's always better to just try and do little bits at a time than to not start at all. So, you know, and also sometimes if you decide to do 15 minutes of decluttering, you'll create momentum and a lot of times you'll wind up doing more than that 15 minutes anyway. But you don't want to wind up letting yourself go and do it all day. You, you do still want to limit your time because if you get started on the 15 minutes and you wind up just tearing things apart and going crazy and you can't get it done in one day, now that you just spent that long tiring day doing it, there's a good chance that the next time it's time to do your 15 minutes, you might not feel like doing it again because you burnt yourself out on the last time. So just kind of keep in mind, it's, it's 
often better to limit yourself on the amount of time so that you feel like you made progress but you didn't burn it yourself out and then you'll be wanting to do it again the next time. So if you're starting a decluttering project that does seem overwhelming, it's a good idea to start with the easy things because that can get you momentum and you're making progress and who cares if it's easy? It's, you're still getting something done. So some easy things, um, just some ideas on some easy things you can start with are things like old magazines, you know, if you have like a basket or something where you throw magazines in or whatever, just sitting on the floor, going through that, tossing out the ones you know you're not going to look at anymore. Um, going through, uh, if you have a place where you keep manuals for different items you have in your house, um, going through the manuals and seeing what you can toss. Oftentimes you'll find that you still have manuals for things you don't even have anymore. So that's an easy place to, to get started. Um, kitchen spices. Do you have any spices in your spice rack that are from like 15 years ago? You can throw those out. Um, storage containers with no matching lids or vice versa. Do you have lids that don't go with any storage containers or any storage containers that don't have a matching lid? Just get rid of those because you're not going to be able to use them anyway. So they're just taking up extra space. That's something very easy to declutter. Um, fridge magnets. Um, if you have any magnets on your fridge that are getting kind of old or worn out, you can just chuck those. That's an easy place to start. Um, expired medicines, go through your medicine cabinet, look and see if there's any medicines in there, old prescriptions, outdated Advil from five years ago or something like that. Just go through and see what's in there that could be tossed. Um, same thing while you're in the bathroom, hair products, any makeup that you don't like or don't use anymore, just get rid of it. Extra bed sheets. Um, it's a good rule of thumb to have um, just two sets of sheets per bed, one that's on and one that's being washed. So if you have excess sheets, get rid of the older ones that you don't need anymore. Um, pens that don't work. I need to do this like right away. I have a little container that sits on the top of my fridge and it has pens and pencils in it. Um, I think at this point, I don't even know if there are any pens in it, but whenever I go to grab one, none of them work and then there's a bunch of pencils in there and every one of them has the tip like completely broken off so that's something i definitely need to do go through it sharpen the pencils put some new pens in there get rid of any that don't work so just things like that those are just some examples there's lots of things like that that you could just kind of start and just do an easy project that doesn't require a lot of thought. It doesn't have a lot of like emotional items that you have to decide if you want to keep or what to do with them. So just, just start easy and get yourself moving. You also want to start with visible things. Um, I listened to a woman named Dana K. White. Um, you may have heard of her before, but she's like this big decluttering um, expert. And um, she talks about visible clutter. So you want to start with things that you can see first. You know, like you don't want to start decluttering in a basement closet that no one ever sees because it's not as fun as organizing a coat closet that your family uses all the time. And you can open it up and say, look what I did. Look how great it looks. You know, you want to be able to see your work and be able for others to see your work to keep you motivated to, to get moving. You don't want to organize like the back of a closet that no one's ever going to see and you did all this work and yeah, it's great and you know you did it, but no one's ever going to see it. You're not going to see it once you finish it. So you want to focus on that visible clutter first. And then once you've got all that done, then of course you can move into those other areas of your home that are less likely to be seen. Um, also, don't pull out more than you can clean up before your time is up. Sometimes you can get like really motivated and really excited and empty out an entire closet and you have everything dumped on the floor and you're going to go through it all and, and make sure everything's neat and organized. And if that's like a large closet and you just pulled out all this stuff, there's nothing worse than tiring out before you've finished going through that pile. And now you don't have the energy to finish the job. You have this big pile of stuff and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to feel like finishing this. And um, it's just not a good idea to try and do these big projects if you're trying to do this in little chunks of time. If you have a big closet you're trying to do, maybe just do the top shelf. Pull that out, organize it, put things back. Or if you have like a bottom part, maybe where there's a shoe rack or I don't know, whatever might be on the bottom part of the closet, just do that. Or maybe what's just hanging on the bar, if there's like a bar in there. But limit yourself to what you can reasonably finish in the amount of time that you've allotted for your decluttering. If it's 15 minutes, you can only take out 
stuff that you can actually work on in 15 minutes. So just pick a small piece. You're still making progress and you just wanna do a little piece because if you do tear everything apart and now you have this big mess that you need to go through, it's gonna take away from the momentum to get started on future decluttering work because that's what you're gonna think of, like how tiring that was and what a big project it was and then you're not gonna wanna continue. So you wanna make sure you keep it manageable and that you can get everything put away and cleaned up in the amount of time that you've devoted to doing this project. While you're doing it too, you wanna have some type of sorting system um, that you can decide where things are gonna go that need to get thrown out or donated or relocated to another part of the house. So either garbage bags or bins or something like that, but you don't wanna kind of like create piles on your floor because then it's hard to remember what's what and something can end up in the wrong pile. So you know, maybe use like a white garbage bag for things you're gonna keep maybe, or, you know, donate or whatever, maybe you use a black garbage bag for things you're going to throw in the trash, whatever, but just have some type of method that as you look at each item and you decide, is it going back into the place I just took it out of, or is it getting donated or thrown away? You want to have a system on where to put those things. Um, That way you can quickly put them um, where they belong and move on to the next item. So as you're decluttering and you have, you're going to end up definitely with some things that you're going to decide you want to get rid of. So just then, then, so what do you do with those things? So you can um, bring them to a local charity. Um, You know, a lot of times uh, there's like Goodwills or things like that, and they'll have a place where you could just bring your items to and you just drop it off and they'll sort through it and put it in their store or do whatever they're going to do with it. Um, Often there's charities that you can call. Um, like I know the Salvation Army does it, um, the Lupus Foundation did it. I don't know if, I don't know if these organiza- organizations still do, but I've had them come in the past where you call and you schedule a pickup and you just put the bags or the boxes like at the end of your driveway and they'll come pick them up. Um, you can bring things to a collection bin. Um, the only thing is be careful with those. If it's something of value that you're giving away, like say you're giving away like really nice clothes and um, you'd like someone to be able to use them, just be careful of the bin you put them in. Because I never knew this, but I realized that a lot of those bins just recycle the fabrics, which is totally fine. I mean, they recycle them, they get money for it, it goes to the organization. But if you're giving away like a really nice expensive jacket that you imagine that someone's gonna be able to use, and then you realize that the bin you put it in is just to recycle fabrics and it's just gonna get shredded to pieces, it can make you feel like kind of, oh, that stinks. It's not what I was thinking was going to happen with that. So just be aware. It usually has a sign right on the bin if that's what's going to be done with it, if it's going to be used to like recycle fabric. So just be aware of that. If it's something you just want to get rid of and you don't care what happens with it, it's completely fine to use those bins. It's, it does still serve a good purpose, but just know what you're putting in there and what's going to happen with it. Um, and then, of course, you can sell things too. Um, if you have something of value that you just don't want to donate, you want to be able to um, sell it to someone for a, a reasonable price and get some money out of it. Um, you know, you can use like the Facebook groups are a great place to start. I think most people have like a local Facebook group where you can post something and people in your neighborhood can purchase it. Um, but I would suggest not letting that hold you back of getting rid of stuff if you're really trying to. Um, declutter your home and get rid of some things sometimes it's better to just donate it even if there is a value to it because your time has value too Um, if it's something that can easily sell and you know it's going to sell quickly then sure go ahead and try and sell it Um, but if it's something that's just going to take a lot of time and and might take a lot of time to sell and it's got to still sit there in your house you know you can decide um, of course but just consider that there's also a value to just getting rid of it and having not having to think about it anymore so that's that um let's see Uh, oh oh so okay so i'm sorry (laughs) i had lost my train of thought so we talked about where to get started what to do with the things that you um you don't want to keep anymore so as you're going through this what you also want to think about is how to limit new clutter because you don't want to be going through this kind of ongoing decluttering Um, process and then continue bringing new clutter into your home and just kind of continuing this cycle. So it's funny, I was trying to find more tips to add to this. I was searching online and I found that there doesn't seem to be that many tips online 
um, for limiting new clutter. It's all about how to get rid of clutter, but there was very few tips on how to limit it. So I'm sharing what I know, what I've heard before, what I've read, and then any other things I could find. So, um, you know, obviously, the, the obvious one um, to start with is try not to purchase things on a whim. Um, if you're gonna buy something, try and give yourself time to think it over if you really need it. And definitely don't buy something just because it's cheap or it's a great deal. You know, you can be in the store and you see like, I don't know, um, a hand mixer and it's like 75% off and you're like, oh, well, mine's a little bit old and this is really nice. And I mean, a hand mixer is probably not a great example, but you know what I mean. And you bring it home and you really didn't need it because even though yours was kind of old, it still works and you weren't planning to get rid of it. So if you, if you are going to get rid of it and replace it with the new one, okay, then that's fine. You're not cluttering your house. You're just replacing one thing for another. But if you're like, oh, well, I'll just kind of save this until my old one stops working, it's like, well, now you have to store that and you have to, now it's going to take space where something else can go. So just kind of really think about purchases before you make them. And just because something's a good deal doesn't mean, doesn't mean you need to get it. Um, try and buy things that have a purpose and that are good quality so that you'll actually use them and they won't become clutter. If you buy something and it's kind of not the best quality and you start to use it and it doesn't really work that great and then you just like stick it up in a cabinet, well now you just created clutter. It's taking space that something that is useful could be using. So just kind of be mindful of future purposes, purchases that you make um, to make sure that it's gonna be something that's gonna be functional in your home. Um, you know, if you're going to buy a decorative item, try to only buy one if you have a specific spot that you wanted to decorate or if you're re replacing an outdated item. If you're in the store and you had no intention of buying a decorative item and you see something that's really cute, try not to buy it unless you know specifically where you're going to put it. Um, because if you bring it home and you don't have a spot for it and then you have to figure out where it's going to go and it, maybe it'll just sit there for a while until you figure out what to do with it. So you want to definitely try and avoid making those types of purchases. And make sure you have space for what you're buying, not just decorative items, but anything. Like, you know, if you're in the store and you see like a really cute coffee mug, um, you know, if it's not going to fit in the cabinet where the coffee mugs go in your house, then... Don't buy it unless you plan on getting rid of one of the ones you already have because there's nothing worse than doing dishes and you go to put the things away and they don't all fit. So don't buy something unless you have the space to definitely store it and to store it without them all being jammed together. Like you want to have like enough room where things fit comfortably in the space. Um, so, oh, take a picture of something that you want to remember. Um, like say if your, your kid makes a drawing in school or someone gives you a greeting card and you want to remember the message they wrote in it or what the greeting card said. So many things can be stored electronically now. You can take a picture of that item and have a memories folder on your computer and put those things in there and you could still see it without having that physical paper. So you don't always need to keep all of those papers. You could keep them out for a period of time. Um, like usually when I get a greeting card, I'll keep it out for, you know, I'll keep it out on display for, I don't know, maybe a few weeks or a month or something. And if it's just a regular greeting card and it just says like, I don't know, love mom or something, I'm not going to keep it like forever. It's, it's a nice greeting card. It served its purpose and then I'll get rid of it. And you don't have to do that. You can take a picture if it's something that you still do want to keep. Um, but it, that's, a, that's your choice on which things you want to keep and whatnot, of course. Um, but maybe there's some things you can think of that you might be able to just take a picture of and keep the memory without having to have all that stuff to store. Because that can definitely... Um, especially if you have kids in school that are bringing home drawings and projects all the time. And I remember I had some things that I was storing from when my kids were little, little that was kind of just like a squiggle on a piece of paper that they brought home from school. I'm like, why am I even keeping this? <laughs> so those things can build up really quickly and, and create some clutter. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, I read this in a decluttering article that I found. And I just thought it was like the greatest thing. So hopefully you like this. But she said, treat every item in your home like you would treat a fork. So what does that mean? If you went to the bathroom and there was a fork laying on the countertop, which sounds absurd, but it happens. I'm sure it's happened in my house with my teenagers. Don't ask me why there'd be a fork in the bathroom, but I have found a fork in the bathroom on the counter. And 
what she meant was treat everything like a fork. If you walked into the bathroom and there was a fork on the counter, you would instinctively grab it and go stick it in the kitchen sink. And then from there, it would get washed and it would go in the drawer where the forks go. You wouldn't even think about it. It wouldn't be like, oh, I'll grab that later or oh, that really should go somewhere else. You know where it belongs, you would immediately grab it and put it away. So while I doubt that I will ever get to that point where I'm so perfect about (laughs) keeping organized and decluttering that I'm gonna instantly see something and think that doesn't belong there and immediately go put it where it belongs, that's not very likely. But just keeping that in mind can definitely maybe try and change your mindset about seeing those things. So I thought that was kind of funny. I really liked it because it it kind of really drove that that thought home, like, yeah, if I saw a fork somewhere, I wouldn't just leave it there. I would immediately grab it and put it in the kitchen sink. So if you could kind of try and develop that on other things in your home, imagine like how organized you could keep everything. So that's where I'm gonna end it. I thought that was really kind of a funny statement that she made and it really made a point. So those are my decluttering tips. I hope you liked this episode. If you'd like to leave me some feedback, you could reach me at Facebook. I would really love to hear from you. Um, It would be really helpful to get some feedback on these episodes and know if you like them or you'd like to hear them a different way or if you have have any episode suggestions, um, that would be really great. You can reach me at facebook.com slash Lola's Frugal Life and that's all one word with no apostrophe. You can message me there. You could like the page. Um, You could post to the page. I have a private listeners group that we're just starting to build up. There's a link to the group on that page. You can submit a request to join, um, or you can go directly to the user group to submit a request to join. That's at facebook.com slash groups slash Lola's Frugal Life. Submit a request. I will approve you, and uh, I think it'd be really fun to have a group where we could talk about some of these types of topics and tips and share um, ideas with others. So that's that. Um, Don't forget to subscribe if you like the show. Uh, You could leave me a review or a rating. That'd be really great. And um, I really appreciate you listening. I'm really thankful you're listening. And um, that's it for today. So I hope you have a really awesome day.